Welcome, uh, my name is Lukas. I'm doing a PhD with Quiet AI and TU Berlin. Uh, I conducted this work with Dominic Meyer from TU Berlin and Marius Münch from VU Amsterdam, formerly and nowadays University of Birmingham. And I will be talking about forming faster firmware fuzzers. So our goal today is to rethink firmware, firmware emulation for fuzzing. Um, I will start with a quick overview of how firmware fuzzing is conducted nowadays. So we already hear um, a lot about it right now. Um, so yeah, usually we have this embedded device. We have a CPU running some firmware, uh, which is usually just a binary blob, flat in memory, like no Linux or anything. Um, we have some external peripherals with which we communicate over MMIO. And fuzzing this is yeah, super hard. Like we do not want to actually fuzz the firmware because it's hard to get information in, it's hard to get information out. Um, it's hard to reset the state, or at least it costs a lot of time to reset the state after each uh, fuzzing iteration. So what people have been doing is uh, just throw the whole thing into an emulator. And um, yeah, so now we are lifting the firmware and running it inside an emulator. And a lot of work uh, is focusing now in the, in the fuzzing space on on one pr big problem we, ha we have here, which is all the external peripherals we usually encounter in embedded firmware. Because, yeah, just lifting a binary blob um, to some um, yeah, architecture we can actually execute in our laptops, that's fairly easy. QMU can uh, do that. But QMU is not coming with all the yeah, vast kinds of, of um, peripherals you can usually find in embedded devices. So we have to model these somehow. And a lot of work is focusing on that. And yeah, for the emulator, it's just using whatever off-the-shelf uh, tools there are. So QMU or Unicorn, which is built on top of QMU. Um, and that is, that is fine, but it is um, not rethought for what we actually want to do, because we actually want to do fuzzing for embedded devices, and we'd want to do it fast. So yeah, we just take whatever emulator, we focus on solving other smaller problems. There also has been work uh, on the emulators, yes, but not extensively, not, um, yeah. And then we're slotting in some fuzzing engine to generate the output, to analyze uh, the coverage information we're getting, and so forth. So, yeah, now two observations here. Um, full binary lifting uh, or rewriting is expensive, although QMU has all these kinds of uh, optimizations, right? We are doing caching. It's not like we're lifting all the instructions every time we run them, but it still, it still costs time, and it was designed um, with a goal to run arbitrarily any architecture on whatever you have in your, in your laptop. But we do not really need that. Like, a vast majority of all embedded firmware is running on ARM chips. And nearly all the work you will read is mainly um, examining firmware for ARM chips. So we can think about how can we efficiently emulate firmware for ARM. And second, um, QMU was developed for more complex systems, so we have some soft MMU in place, which uh, yeah, um, introduces an overhead to every single memory access we're doing because we have to dispatch things, and we're just introducing a significant overhead. There are also other roadblocks we are discussing in our paper, so feel free to check that out. But for the sake of this presentation, I will, or for the sake of time, I will focus on these two. And yeah, the, the punchline of our paper is near-native rehosting. So focusing on the first observation, we want to do rewriting and MU or rehosting of, of ARM firmware. And the core idea comes from, from two statements. So first, yeah, a lot of embedded firmware runs on ARMv7 M chips. This is the, um, the small, the small uh, brother of the, of the ARM family. And a lot of the new ARMv8 chips you have in consumer hardware is able to run that instruction set as is for backwards compatibility. 
So, um, for example, the chips you've got in Raspberry Pis, Raspberry Pi 4s, you can just give them RMB7 M instructions, so for the AR32 and uh, thumb instruction sets, and it will be able to, to run these instructions. It can naturally understand that instruction set. So, our idea is to just take the firmware for embedded um, devices and execute the binaries directly on their bigger brothers. By that, we can heavily reduce the amount of code we need to lift, and we can outperform existing rehosting approaches uh, built on general purpose emulators. The second thing is reduced memory access overhead. So we are just uh, mirroring the memory layout of the uh, yeah, flat firmware image in, in Linux user space. So we're just starting the whole firmware as a Linux user space process on consumer hardware. As I said, we use Raspberry Pis and a Honeycomb um, developer uh, workstation for that. Um, and we do not need any extra logic for memory uh, accesses. Um, furthermore, we can just use the MMU your, your uh, consumer uh, platform comes with. So yeah, your Linux on your Raspberry Pi is able to use that. And now we can introduce, for example, some custom bump allocator with guard pages to catch out of bounds recent writes and stuff like that. And just rely on the hardware MMU instead of using uh, overhead and using soft MMU. Um, yeah, this is an overview of our framework. We call it Safari Fuzz, which is the uh, same architecture, firmware rehosting and fuzzing. Um, and yeah, it mainly uh, consists of a lifting engine, which is rewriting small parts of the ARM firmware. Um, I will show you in a second why we still need some rewriting. Um, yeah, just translate that firmware image and into a representation we can then execute in user space. We have some hardware abstraction layer abstractions. Um, yeah, just hooks we have to insert to deal with the initial problem of external peripherals. We cannot get around that. Uh, that is not the main focus of this work, but um, yeah, we decided to do a HLE, that is high level emulation um, approach. So instead of symbolic execution or pattern based MIO modeling, we are just simulating um, what a uh, peripheral accessing um, function is doing. And last but not least, we are using libafl to uh, deploy the fuzzing engine in the background. Yeah, this is the high-level emulation. So we are basically searching for function accessing, accessing any MMO peripherals, and we are emulating their behavior in a sen or in a kind which can interact with our fuzzers. So on the right side, we see uh, the hook for an fopen call where we're just taking uh, fuzzing input, putting that into some um, dummy object which resembles a Linux file object, and copy that into memory where the firmware will be able to find that where it expects it and um, use it. And then we are uh, hooking the, um, the function call inside the firmware and replacing the code which would be uh, natively executed with our high-level implementation. And by that, we can eliminate uh, problematic MIO accesses. This is the basic block rewriting. So, um, yeah, we still need some rewrites because, well, mostly for two things. Well, so the first thing is we need to insert hooks, once for coverage, um, info coverage information collection, and second, because we need those um, HAL hooks. And whenever you insert any kind of instruction, all the rest shifts, right? Like, there's not much space. You cannot always expect or assume to be uh, to, um, for it to be for it to, to have space enough to, to just insert new instructions. So you have to shift things around. And that will ruin all your PC relative accesses. So that is why you have to rewrite everything which is based on the PC. Um, so yeah, you're seeing here a relative load, um, relative on the, on the current program counter. Um, we're just uh, rewriting that to uh, absolute memory address. We have evaluated our uh, framework on 12 targets previously fast by other work, so that is like the baseline, the benchmark, um, including, including STM32-based POC firmware. We have HTTP servers for um, Atmel chips. We have Contiguo S-based Wi-Fi receivers, and also a benchmark to test the vulnerability detection capabilities of our approach. So that is just a toy 
um, from where which comes with uh, artificial vulnerabilities we, we have to find and we were able to find. And then we compared um, our thing to four baseline configurations, so state-of-the-art approaches in firmware rehosting and fuzzing, uh, namely Hallucinator, which is state-of-the-art for this um, hull level hooking, and Fuzzware, which is state-of-the-art for symbolic execution-based ML modeling. And also we introduced Hallucinator Lib AFL, which is just replacing the original um, legacy AFL, which was used by the original Hallucinator paper, with the same libafl configuration we are using in our framework to eliminate um, that possibility of a, yeah, <laughs> to be the only reason why we are better. And for Fastware, we also have one uh, graph where we are counting only the um, basic blocks outside of HAL functions, because you can imagine if we are hooking away HAL functions, um, we naturally cannot reach them, so just to get a fairer comparison there. And here you have uh, the coverage over time. Um, yeah, please note that the, the time, the x-axis is a log scale, so yeah, between zero seconds, 10 seconds, up to 24 hours. And you can see that we're vastly faster and recovering, um, this is uh, six of 12 targets. Uh, overall, in comparison to Hallucinator, we're um, recovering 30% more coverage. And for virtually all targets, we're doing so, so way, way faster. So also, if you think about green fuzzing, um, yeah, just being able to explore your targets faster is always something we want on fuzzing. For the performance, overall, we are on average 690x uh, faster than Hallucinator, um, up to 1,100 times. And for fuzz, we're still 145 times. And last but not least, we also um, uh, explored our approach with two previously unfast targets. One is an open source firmware for electric motor uh, um, inverters, and the other one is an example firmware for SDM. Um, embedded devices, which is doing some, some JPEG parsing. And we were able to uh, find three new bugs and reported those to the vendors. And with that, I conclude my presentation. Um, yeah, we are introducing new native execution with minimal rewriting uh, to rehost embedded firmware in Linux user space. And that allows us to vastly increase the execution speeds and how fast we can fast to achieve more coverage or at least on par coverage in way fewer time. Um, yeah, with this QR code, you can find our GitHub or the source code of our framework. You can find the experiment data we have, and we also got our artifact evaluated. Thank you.